coverage from Robertson Memorial Fieldhouse on the campus of Bradley University. 25 Sports presents Bradley Basketball. Tonight, the Bradley Braves take on the Golden Hurricane of the University of Tulsa. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Cohen Furniture Company. Quality merchandise, unbeatable prices. Cohen's. The University Bank. The bank that begins with you. The Paps Brewing Company. Brewers of Paps Blue Ribbon. America's Blue Ribbon Beer since 1844. By Hardee's. Best eaten in town. By Emico Oil Company. America runs better on American oil. And by Rick's TV. 315 Court Street, Pekin. The largest dealer within 132 miles of Pekin. Now, here's Frank Bazzoni and Norm Ulrich. Once again, to exciting Missouri Valley Conference basketball right here on Channel 25. Tonight, the Bradley Braves take on the Golden Hurricane from the University of Tulsa. Hello again, everybody. I'm Norm Ulrich, along with Frank Masoni. Frank, the Golden Hurricane haven't won here in eight years. Well, they haven't brought the kind of team in here, Norm, that could win, but tonight they do. They're 11-2. and two. They've beaten teams like North Carolina. They've beaten Louisville. They've beaten Purdue. They've beaten Wichita State. They're for real. They're ready, and they're tough. Braves come in tonight, 4-1 in the Valley, Tulsa at 3-1. And, and we want to well, special welcome to you folks watching down in Tulsa. Stand by, we'll be back with the starting lineups and the play-by-play -play right after this. Norm Ulrich and Frank Bassoni back at Robertson Memorial Fieldhouse. We're about 30 seconds away from tip-off. Bradley Braves hosting the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Frank, I mentioned the Open. Tulsa hasn't won here in eight years, and they've lost 12 of their last 13 road games. But don't be fooled. This is a good basketball team. The Gold Rush is 12-11-2 uh, on the season. They're 3-1 and one in the Missouri Valley Conference. Bradley leads the series 45-18. to 18, But this may be the best Tulsa team in some time, especially in the recent past. Uh, I should mention at the top here, Norm, that Jeff Robinson uh, was named ineligible by Bradley University. He's appealing that decision. If not approved, he wants to go to a junior college in return, but he is not dressed tonight. Ready for our starting lineups. First of all, we'll interview or we'll introduce the uh, Golden Hurricane from Tulsa. Again, we want to welcome you folks watching us down in Tulsa. We also want to mention on the outset, for you folks watching in Central Illinois, we will have videotape replays tonight. However, you folks down in Tulsa will not be able to see the videotape replay. Sellout crowd, Robertson Memorial Fieldhouse, 7,300 plus. Bradley and the Tulsa Golden Hurricane under the new head coach, Nolan Richardson, who has done quite a job with his basketball team since taking over. Golden Hurricane last year, 8 and 19 on the year. At center for Tulsa, 6'9", junior, number 33 from the Bronx, New York, Greg Stewart. And for, for Bradley, a 6'9", junior from Chicago, Donald Reese. Donald Reese coming off a seven-point performance at Creighton last Saturday. They're going to need Donald tonight if they're going to beat Tulsa. At one guard for Tulsa, a 6'5", junior from Richmond, Virginia. Number 25, you'll want to keep your eyes on him tonight. His name is Paul Bressy. And at guard, one guard for Bradley tonight. Number 15, a 6'2", senior from Detroit, Michigan, Eric Duhart. At the other guard tonight for Tulsa, number 12. He's a six-foot junior from Birmingham, Alabama, Mike Anderson. Uh, he alternates as starting guard with Bill Spradling. Tonight, it's Anderson's turn. And for Bradley, number 35, a 6'7", junior from St. Louis, Soldan High School, David Thurtill. And at forward, the only returning starter from last year, six-foot, six-inch senior from Elk Lake, Pennsylvania, number 43, Bob Stevenson. And for Bradley from McGuinney, Florida, six-four senior, number 42, there's Bobby Ford. And at the other forward, number 24, a junior from El Paso, Texas. They call him Sweet D. This is David Brown, averaging almost 16 points a game and seven rebounds. He leads Tulsa in both categories. And for Bradley, number 11, Mitchell Anderson, the 6'8 junior from Chicago, 18 and a half points a game, almost 10 rebounds a game. This Bradley, is the ninth, ninth straight sellout for the Bradley Braves at Robertson Memorial Fieldhouse. 
And the Braves have won 26 games in a row here, but they're threatened tonight. The officials for tonight's basketball game will be Ron Spittler of Hutchison, Kansas, and John Dubro of Wichita, Kansas. Interesting uh, little sidelight on Mr. Dubro. He did the very last game that Western Texas Junior College ever lost. That was two years ago. That's where Nolan Richardson came, brought four of his players. He's turned the program around at Tulsa. Of course, last year, Western Texas Junior College finished 37-0 in the year. Number one nationally ranked junior college team in America. There you have a shot at the band. Shot of the, of the floor. Tulsa out there. They're dressed in their blue traveling uniforms. Trimmed in gold. Look with... Uh, Call them tiger claws down the side. Bradley, of course, in their white home uniform, trimmed in red. We're all ready to go. It'll be Bradley uh, Mitchell Anderson against Paul Presley, jumping, Greg Stewart, rather, jumping center. And bring your first half action, here's Frank Bassoni. Thank you very much, Norm. Hold on to your Stetson. The ball is in the air. It's Bradley Tulsa, Missouri Valley Conference basketball on TV 25. The fans are making some noise at Robertson Memorial Fieldhouse. Frank Bassoni and Norm Ulrich reminding you that this is Bradley basketball in the Missouri Valley Conference against Tulsa. First half action. Norm, on Sunday it's the Super Bowl on NBC. The preview is at 3. The Super Bowl game 5 to 8.30 and there's a post game at 8.30. That ought to be some fun too. There's a discussion going on down at the scorer's table. There is apparently a wrong number put in the Tulsa book. And uh, now Nolan Richardson is pointing toward the Bradley bench, and he just slapped Tony Baroni's hand off of him. And he is really upset about something. Now the official John Drabo is saying to Dick Versace, stay away. There's a technical foul against Tulsa for an incorrect number in the scorebook or an incorrect substitution. We'll get the, the reserve. Ed Lindblad is 52. Bruce Van Lee is 53, and that's the problem. And uh, our listing shows uh, Lynn Blad with number 54. So that all right. Hassan Houston will shoot the tee for Bradley. Here's a technical foul, a good look at Hassan Houston. Senior from St. Louis. University High School in St. Louis. It's a four-point Tulsa lead. That means Bradley has the ball out of bounds. And this sideline could get a little exciting before this is all over with. Watch the tempo now. See if Bradley can get a goal and turn the crowd on. Anderson, a 20-footer. Yes! Tulsa answers his crown. It's fouled by Bobby Ford going to the goal. Not a popular call in Peoria, Illinois. Frank, in order for that to be a foul on David Brown, Bobby Ford has got to be set. And there's no way he was set. As we take a look at the replay, you fans in Central Illinois... As Bob Stevenson sets down, take a look at it now. You can see uh, Ford is still moving. Well, you're uh, getting a variety of opinions from people that, that watch that, but it, uh, from our vantage point, it was very, very difficult to tell. Close. Greg Stewart back in the lineup for Tulsa as Bob Stevenson sets down. All right, Tulsa's got Anderson and Spradling out at guard. They've got David Brown, Paul Pressey, and Greg Stewart up front. All right, Tulsa lines up the defense. Houston to Reese. There's 110 in the first half. Bradley will take a good shot here. Here comes Anderson. Acrobatic shot. No. Here's a rebound on the floor. Saved by Houston. Inbounds nicely to third kill in one minute. Third kill. Stutter step. Stop. Down low. And a foul. Who's it on? Basket went in, but it won't count. Foul is on Against David. Bradley. Foul is on White. David third kill, number 35. You can take a look there. David, it looks like the player was set, and David went into him. Offensive foul. Okay, now uh, on the deck is the Tulsa player that got hit there. Dick Versace is having uh, a word with John Drabo of Wichita, Kansas, of Missouri Valley County. There's Mike Anderson, as you can see the graphic, uh, the junior. Mike's out of Birmingham. They call him Mighty Mouse, and he's been mighty for sure here. 
Now Robert, Robert Jenkins and Johnson will be in the right hand corner. Johnson has the ball now and follow him if you will up to the about in the middle of your screen now. He throws an elbow into Robert and it's coming up. We'll have it in slow motion also if you miss it. He misses with the left and throws the right. And Kenny Garrett has to be restrained here by the referees. At this particular time, Coach, and we're going to show it in slow motion also. Uh, mayhem, I guess. Well, you know, up till this point, we were having a very good basketball game, and it was beautifully officiated, and, you know, both coaches were working hard. And, and um, I don't know, you know, or if there's ever any justification for this. I think that, uh, that the, you know, the, the game is not important when it comes to a person's welfare. And one, um, one more time here. Yeah, it's not it's not easy to watch this because I like Robert Jenkins. He's a heck of a man. You know, if you know this person, it's it's very difficult. You know, for you to to see this decimation, you know, of his face and then not be emotional about it. Then a fan came out of the stands right there. That guy right there, he hit Danny Ruffin in the back of the head, and then uh, Tony jumped over to get the guy off of Danny, and then later on. A guy hits me in the back of the head, and I felt at this point that we weren't safe. Robert had already been hurt. Our kids are very upset, very angry, very frustrated. And I felt that I should take a stand here and say, hey, look, Missouri Valley, let's clean up our act away from home. There's no place in basketball for, for the lack of supervision, the lack of crowd control. I think each, look at this, each university, okay, I mean, this guy here is a crazy, okay? And this is what this is the result of that kind of poor supervision. Well, so Robert comes back out and sits on the bench, and the game starts here for about three or four seconds, and then you can let us know. Right now, I'm, I'm putting on a little show here because I'm saying, hey, we're not safe, you know? And uh, I'm not going to hurt anybody. I'm not going to hit anybody. But I'm demonstrating that when you go on the road in this league, that I talked to Tony, and he said, hey, in the ACC, yeah, they're vocal, and they, you know, they're hollering, they're enthusiastic. In his years in the ACC, he never had this kind of problem. In my years in the Big Ten, I never had this kind of problem. This is Robert Jenkins, who just had his nose broken with his arm around, trying to lead you away from that right. back. Yeah, what a great kid he is. So I think that, hey, something has to be done all across our league so that proper measures are taken. And then it's, it's not the whole crowd at Tulsa. I'm not blaming all of them. But if you got one or two crazy guys in the stands, they got to be eliminated. That's all there is to it. Now here you took your team off the floor, but I, you were. Uh, I was told to take my team Johnny off the Overby. floor. Right, Johnny Overby said. Supervisor. Yeah, he told me it was unsafe for us to be out there, you know. But that was sort of ex post facto. I knew that before. So um, uh, it was a tragic thing. I, I'm sorry that it happened. But I'm, you know, I'm not so sure that you know I wouldn't take the stand again. I'm a person that takes a stand. And, and uh, when you go on the road in the Missouri Valley, when you come to Bradley, no one's going to come out of the stands and hit you. We're not going to throw things at you at Bradley. And, we're, and I'm, I'm going to work very hard to make sure that we don't print things on T-shirts that, that are obscenities and that we don't shout obscenities. You know? And I'm not saying that there's not going to be an isolated individual, but I think if we do have isolated individuals who are really making fools of themselves and, and, and trying to whip the crowd into a frenzy, then I think they should be ejected. They should be ejected at Bradley. They should be ejected at Tulsa or Drake or wherever we play, or New Mexico State, okay? And I think we should all recruit. We should all try to build the best teams we can, coach the heck out of them. I think the coaches should stick together, okay? We, should, we can have a nice, hotly contested rivalry while the game is going on. And when the game is over, hey, we should be able to go out and have a beer together. I was able to do that, you know, with some fellow Big Ten coaches when I was coaching in the Big Ten. I was always able to do that with my fellow coaches in Chicago, and it should be able to be done in the Missouri Valley. It is not, I don't think that the pressures that the individual universities put on the coaches to win should be so great that they have to foster and that kind of crowd control or lack of crowd control. I think something's got to be done about it, and I want to clearly take a stand. And I think something will be done now. Hey, we'll be back with more right after this. Foul is on Boise Winters. It's a second foul on Winters, and Tulsa's going to get two shots, and there goes the Braves to the locker room. But Tulsa will get two shots. And Dick Versace goes right to Johnny Overby. That's exactly who he's talking to.
right to Johnny Overby, his right left, and the free throw is good by McKinney. 37 to 31 is the score. Ah, uh, you can't beat fun at the old ballpark, huh? And McKinney makes the halftime score, 37 to 32, in favor of Bradley. We'll Back at the Tulsa Assembly Center, where Bradley has a five-point lead at halftime. Always a lot of fun here, huh, Dick? Well, a quick hello to David and Julie. Hi. Um, it's a it's a difficult game to coach because of the clock and and and, and uh, uh, scoring situation. Therefore. You know, and in all honesty, it's a difficult game for the officials to officiate. I, I, I really feel sorry for them. They're doing the best job they can. Obviously, I couldn't have agreed with what happened at the end of the half. I'm sitting here, and I hear the guy say, one, when Boise has it in his hands, and he loses it, and then the guy gets it, and then the guy shoots it, and then the guy makes it, and then he says, foul, basket, uh, basket didn't go in. I guess he gave him two shots. But, I mean, it, you know, it's a difficult thing for them. And, you know, it's, officiating's hard enough. And to place this burden on them, you know, I got a lot of compassion for them. I really do. Okay, let's talk about the game for a second. What's working well, and are we going to see a lot of it in the second half? Well, I, I think when uh, when they tried to play with us, you know, legit man to man, you know, we really chopped them up good. And uh, my kids are playing very well. I think you, you know, all the people back home, you got to be proud of these guys. You got to come see us play too. Quickness offsetting their size? I think so. I think our our quickness is is genuine, and they got good quickness, but um, not like we do. And, so uh, we, we had a few little problems with their trap because we had a variety of things that we were going to do against it, and uh, we were trying a variety of things. And so what we got to do is reduce the things we do and just do what we choose to do and do it well. All right. Go get them second okay. half. Back to Frank now. To look at this, that's the picture that uh, of Dick Versace uh, circa uh, the 1960-something. And Booker Johnson comes down with it. Dick Versace is yelling at the official. Here's the voice he loose for a stop. And again, the man that made it go was Jimmy Less. The point of their zone, Nolan Gibson from way outside. And there's the fourth foul on Boise winners. No, oh, they're giving him two shots. The basket doesn't count. Well, he didn't see it, I'm sure. Unless they call it a flagrant foul. Count the basket. He didn't see it. Bonner never saw it. 19 for Webster. Bonner said that before Melvin Harden can be taken back out. I don't think uh, Melvin Harden can be taken back out. Let's see what the rule. He cannot go in and come out. That, of course, is a violation of the rules. This is worse than an OPEC meeting. It's unbelievable. Everybody's mad at everybody. It's just a simple rule. Uh, what they're simply talking about to our right is whether or not Melvin Harden can go into the game and come back out. He has to go back in the game. Now, it's as simple as that, it, it, that's just a rule. Uh, Bradley put Harden in for less. Then they put Johnson in for that. It, it, that's just a rule. Uh, Bradley put Harden in for less. Then they put Johnson in for Harden. It's during the same dead ball. Go back in. And Melvin will come out. <laughs> Much ado about nothing. Who's on first? The ball still. And Nolan well, Richardson wants a technical on Bradley. Now one of the officials waved the player in. He waved him in. That is for sure. I saw the official wave him in. I happen the? to think the official's wrong. What was the line Casey Stangle had? Can't anybody here play this game? <laughs> That's exactly the line. Turning point of the game had to be when Boise came out. Tulsa ran off 10 straight. You were down by six. And the foul situation. Well, I don't know what you mean by the foul situation. But basically, uh, when they went to the zone, 
They backed off of our off guard. For some reason, uh, Nolan was reluctant to shoot the ball, and when he did shoot it, he missed it. So he was 0 for 4, so I stuck Melvin in there, and then he missed one too. And without Boise in there, we lost a lot of our offense. He picked up uh, his fourth foul with about eight minutes to go. And that was, you know, we really need him. He's really playing well. But I think what's a, 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 there's a positive thing that happened in this ball game. This team is 13-0. and 0, And uh, they have to come and play us in Peoria. Uh, if you, and we know for sure that uh, we, we can play with them and beat them. And we will do that when we play them up there. Uh, will the scoreboard be working at the Civic Center? Yeah, well, I, you know, you can't really blame... Um, uh, you know, uh, the, the Tulsa people, that this is a civic arena, and uh, if they don't have their, their facility working, then uh, maybe they should give back the rental fee. I don't know. One quick one about Ricky Ross. Why was he eating you guys up so badly? What's that now? Why was he eating you up so easily? Well, it wasn't, he wasn't eating us up. He was 6'7", and Jimmy Les is 6 feet. If that's, uh, that's really not a fair description to, to describe what happened. But it is what happened, okay? I mean, I'm not trying to tell you that what you saw wasn't what I saw, because, uh, but Jimmy was right there, and the problem is you can't come and double on him when he goes into that rocking stuff, because then he'll kick it off to Harris. And uh, so we just had to hope that he just, you know, didn't continue to stay hot, and he did. But that wouldn't have been a, a major problem, because those were tough shots that he hit. It's just that when we went to the other end, we had that offensive problem that I described earlier about our off guard not looking at the hole at all. Okay, a bizarre night. You get them next time, all right? Well, you know, it was a good basketball game. I think our kids acquitted themselves very well, and I'm quite proud of them. Okay, thanks, Coach. Right. Back to Frank at Tableside.